Hi everyone, welcome to ArtsFest Online and to this evening's Yamcams book launch event. It follows on from our event in April where Yamcams first launched their uh, photography project which encouraged people of the region to take a closer look at their local environment. Tonight we will be joined by the Yamcams team so if you have any questions throughout the event please do use the Q&A box. Um, and just a quick reminder that this event is being recorded and it is a public platform so please do not share any confidential information. So welcome everyone and um, over to you Tom. Thanks Claire. Um, yeah so um, first of all what I thought I'd do is um, introduce um, all the team who are here today um, and thanks for everyone to, for coming. Um, it's good of you to come along. Uh, it's quite a nice day um, so you know coming indoors you know, might be a bit of a break from the sun but um so yeah first of all i thought i'd say uh, a little bit about the project and also the you know the team involved and how it came about um but with the with the panel we've got today we've got um magda petford um magda was uh uh behind all our design work so our graphics and illustration work and she did a really great job on that and i'll be talking a little bit more about uh, the role that kind of uh, illustration and design played in the project. Um, then we've got um, Tegan Kimberley. Um, so I've known Tegan for a while. She's um, a great photographer um, and specialises in people, but al also she's great with the kind of street photography and very flexible with, with lots of different approaches. So uh, it was great to get Tegan on board. Uh, likewise, Sarah Bellion uh, is somebody whose work I've, I've really liked uh, over the past few years. Um, so when I had the opportunity to kind of uh, involve people that, that you know, like their work, I thought I'd, I'd get in touch with them. And luckily, uh, Sarah agreed as well. So um, and I'll, I'll speak a little bit more about uh, the regions that people got involved with in, in a minute. Um, and then we've got Sarah Zakarek, uh, who I've known for a long time. Um, and she, she's been really uh, instrumental in kind of supporting my, my work. And the first exhibition that I put on um, was, was mainly down to Sarah's help. Um, my, my knowledge of putting on exhibitions was quite minimal, as she can testify to. Um, but it was great to have someone like Sarah involved. So obviously when I, you know, we, I got a project together, I thought it would be nice to, to repay that in a little way and ask Sarah along. Um, and we've also got Kerry Hadley Price with us, um, who was lucky. Uh, we were lucky enough to to get on board in terms of um, a written piece for the book. Um, Kerry's a novelist from the area, um, so she's based in the Black Country. Um, I actually went to the same school as her, uh, different times, um, and it was a grammar school, so it's quite posh when she went to the school I went to. But when I got there, it was just called a comprehensive, and it and it wasn't very long. Um, but we actually did go to the same school. Um, but Kerry's a, a novelist, and what I've always liked about her her work is that they're set in the Black Country, but also the way she writes about the region is is really uh, spot on. So any chance I've had to kind of involve Kerry in in the written word, um, I've, I've asked her along, and, and luckily she agreed to get involved in our project. Um, so. The, most of the people uh, I've just introduced, apart from uh, Kerry and Magda, um, were involved in um, working with the region. So as most people will know, the Black countries uh, divided up to four boroughs, um, a bit like the Beastie Boys album, the four boroughs, but uh, there's Dudley, Samwell, uh, Wolverhampton, and Warsaw. So what we did was divide people up into, into boroughs uh, and then we, we had people specialising in areas that they either knew of or uh, actually live in, which is quite handy. Um, so we've got that kind of local knowledge. Um, the book itself uh, and, and the project um, came about when Creative Black Country put a call out. Um, they, they've got a, an idea of um, setting up and supporting projects that operate under lockdown. So. Um, Obviously, we were quite restricted, particularly in the depths of lockdown to our movements. But um, one of the things I thought about was the, the fact that I was still going out taking photographs. Um, 
you could go I could go on my bike or walk around and what I thought I'd do is maybe look at ways that we could link that to more of a, a public project um, and I put together the idea of Yamcams based around that really that the idea that um, people could get creative with their own photography um, you don't need a camera you could just use a smartphone if you want so we had a mixture of that kind of that, those kind of images um, but really I looked at um, my own practice and then thought what I'll do is just show people how I work um, and explain it um, via Instagram and, and then see what happened really uh, and luckily we had quite a lot of people get involved we had well I think we were quite surprised really the amount of people who sent images in um, I think and the main thing I'd like to say is overall that the quality was amazing there's some really good images in um, and in fact not not much repetition really like no two people sent in the same kind of work and I think the difficulty we've, we've had as a team really is narrowing it down into the book but obviously we did say that all along that you know we, we can only be selected in terms of how much we can put into a book um, but we'll explain the process um, a little bit further into the into the talk um, but hopefully that's sort of giving you a little intro to the the project um, what I'd like to do first of all then is, is uh, just hand over to Magda uh, who's going to share some of her artworks and illustrations for the project. Um, originally, um, I, I didn't have a, a graphic design uh, aspect to it. And I did, I thought, well, what I could do is probably cobble something together myself. But actually, um, it was one of the best things I, I did really, I think was involve Magda because it, I think communicating ideas and uh, information is always better done by an expert than somebody who's just uh, using paint. Um, so I don't know if Magda, want, you would like to take over and show people your, your work? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so before we started the project, um, we had spoken about how the visuals could make um, the whole thing a bit more cohesive um, and be recognisable to people. Um, and there were a few things that we wanted to, um, to sort of come across from the project. Um, one of those was that it would be accessible uh, for people. Um, obviously the project is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be about bringing people out and exploring their local area. Um, we also knew that a lot of people would be using their mobile phones um, as cameras. So we wanted to incorporate that somehow into the design um, as well as give a little nod to the black country. Um, so I have got my very, very first draft sketches here. So this is on real rough paper. Um, so I don't know if you can see some of these first designs that we had. Um, there's a bit of an Insta riff here, um, turning it into a canal. Um, we're sort of playing around with uh, phone lenses. Um, and that's when I started designing the Yamcams design that we've got here. Um, and that was based on a sort of fisheye kind of lens. So it would look like a phone camera lens, um, but it's got the text in it there. Um, and this design, I think, just stood out to both of us. Um, it's like quite vibrant, fun, um, and incorporated those elements that we discussed. Um, and it was also um, quite practical in that it's a circle, it fits in your social media logo easily. Um, so that's the one that we went for. Um, and from that, I developed it um, and made the logo that you've probably already seen um, live today. And what um, was good as well was that you uh, stuck to your colour palette, which if people see your work, uh, you do use those colours in your work. And I, I think it looks really great in, in the, those kind of uh, those colours. So I was happy to go with that. And it did, that particular logo did stand out amongst all the others, I think. So, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Um, and then in addition to the logo, we also wanted to um, create some reusable social media templates. Um, so this was so that when we were posting information, um, we could add text over an image really easily. So Tom, you could do it in Microsoft Paint if you wanted. Um, so we had those templates that were really useful. Um, and I based the illustrations for those on some of uh, Tom's work. Um, Here's some of his black country photos. Um, so I've got again some rough sketches here where we can see 
the initial designs that just showed the templates with the building and how the text might go on there. And those really rough sketches then turned into the final illustrations um, that we've used throughout the project. Um, I think they've been quite useful. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Um, yeah, I think because, you know, conveying information in, in Instagram is quite difficult just by photographs and it's, it's really helped. And I, was, I think I was amazed as well that you provided so many different variations. So that, that was great. So we kept the, uh, kept the, the whole kind of Insta feed flowing, really. Um, but also Twitter as well. Um, Sarah, Sarah Zacharet was great on, at setting that up for us. Um, again, Twitter's... Uh, Kind of, it's. I think it's a weird one for photography, but it seemed to work. People uh, did a lot of retweeting of it and stuff like that. And again, you know, the initial stages of promoting a project, it's great to have an identity. So that that was really useful. Um, so thanks for that. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I didn't know whether people just. Uh, we've got our um, people who work with the different boroughs. I don't know if people wanted to just sort of maybe just talk a little bit about how we started to take in images and how we we handle that. That might be worth having a look at. Um, and I, I've got some images of the, how we put the book together as well. Um, so I don't know if people want, want to chip in about how we actually started to take in images and, and start to uh, work with them. Shall I, I'll speak. <laughs> Yeah. Well, who's going to speak? Um, yeah. So I guess, yeah, we, we split it down into boroughs and I think we linked in with some of the creative black country kind of links that also worked in those boroughs to try and not just highlight um, kind of individuals that was maybe already following the page or, or that we knew, but kind of reaching out to some real local people so that we really got a real uh, breadth and width around what the borough feels like um, and so it wasn't just a bit of like an echo chamber of, of people that we kind of already knew so we knew that it was probably gonna like throw up a few wild cards as well in there which I think we were all really exciting excited yeah. to see um, so I think that was quite a good one almost opening it up to some of those community groups maybe people um almost in the vein of like a folk art and outsider art kind of way things that we wouldn't necessarily see sometimes on instagram yeah so uh just touching on that a bit we um we made it so it was accessible to anyone and everyone really that was our aim you know there wasn't uh, a limit on age group um uh, how well you can take a photograph you know it was literally anyone and everyone of all walks of life we wanted them to get involved in this and see um, we wanted to see what the, their borough looked like through their through their eyes essentially and we did we got some um, we got some really interesting stuff and like Tom said um, people were very original they didn't um, there wasn't duplications and stuff like that so it, that made it uh, quite easy when we were putting the book together and stuff but it's quite interesting how as well with um even though we've got all these different boroughs there's all there's always some sort of link with um you know you get you get the feel of the black country uh the, there's a sort of running theme with like um i don't know a re bit of retro buildings um, you know, interested people and just stuff like that, really. So it was it was fun to see what people uh, come up with. I think just adding on to what Tegan was saying about amateur photographers, um, we have got like the whole range in the final book. So we've got people that, um, you know, might have only recently picked up a camera phone for the first time um, submitting images. And that's fine. Like, you know, there was, there was never any kind of expectation that we wanted people to go out, buy a fancy camera, use a fancy lens, um, send us some professional photographs, because that's not what it's about. If, if you are a professional, brilliant. Um, but, you know, th this project was accessible or we wanted it to be accessible for everybody. Um, you know, everybody can be a photographer nowadays. You Most people have got a camera um, in their pocket most of the time. Um, and I guess what we wanted to do is give people a purpose to go outside during lockdown, a kind of scary, crazy time, 
um, and say that this is your reason, you know, if you need a little nudge um, to kind of pop out for a walk, um, this is it. Yeah. yeah, but but absolutely blown away by the quality of the images from professionals and amateurs. Really, yeah, that's, really that's good. Right. I mean, a couple of people have said it's the first time they've ever sent a, an image to anywhere. You know, they've not submitted any work before. Um, and, you know, it's amazing. Like, so, some people have been doing it for years, so, and you can't really tell the difference with some of them. So it's that, that's true. Um, I think the other element to it that a lot of people who've fed back to us have said is that... Um, that it's helped them with lockdown. So it's given them a bit of a reason to get out. Um, and I think when we first did a launch for, for this and Arts Fest uh, were great about hosting that, we talked about the idea of examining your local area in a lot more detail. Um, you know, it's an opportunity, you know, because you weren't really supposed to be moving around much, um, just to maybe look at where you're from a bit, bit more, um, and look at closer details that you perhaps wouldn't have seen. Um, and I think people have really done that. So, you know, the work's been brilliant, um, like we say. So everyone who's in the book uh, and the people who just appeared on the Insta site, you know, that there's been some fantastic work. Um, some people involved don't actually use Instagram, which is quite interesting. So, and some of the most popular images um, are from people who, who are not on Instagram at all. So they didn't actually get to see their work perhaps um, on a daily basis. Um, but also, um, you know, it's, it's just kind of interesting that they've picked up on the project, even though they don't follow Instagram or Yamcams. Um, we did some radio work, which makes us sound quite, quite high powered, but um, we had some quite interesting uh, appearances on radio, which again, Photography and radio don't automatically seem to go very well together, but they do, um, surprisingly. Uh, so it helped with Keegan, connecting to those people, sorry. It helped yeah, connecting yeah. to those people that don't aren't necessarily on social media or or and they probably do have like an email address or a family member that has got social media so that could they could see it again. But it was just a way of being able to connect to more people instead of just just um just that small knit of photographers like Sarah was saying about at the start yeah so me and Tegan went we went to the middle of Hell's Own didn't we and, and appeared on Black Country Radio I think <laughs> I think we thought it'd be some kind of like Radio One road show a bit, I don't know, <laughs> a bit like we'd be in Hyde Park or something but we're, we're basically on a picnic bench in the middle of Hal's Owen, which <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably, it's probably sums up my level anyway. So, um, <laughs> yeah. But that was really nice of them. And, uh, you know, they were, they were super, super professional and helpful. Um, and it did, it did reach quite kind of a wide audience. Uh, and the same with uh, Radio WM. We went on WM and uh, talked about the project. Um, and I think... We had, I think going back to the idea of people not submitting stuff before, um, we had people submitting, like people got their mom and dad to submit images if they were kids, you know, so it was kind of a family involvement as well, which is quite nice. Um, so, and, or, and vice versa, you know, obviously pe people getting their teenagers to, to, to use Instagram and, um, you know, email to, to send stuff through. So it was a real mixture of approaches really, but everyone got their, in the end, really, I think. Um, what I thought I'd do is um, just briefly, uh, and obviously people can chip in while I'm um, preparing this, but just show people how we started to sift through the images. Um, it's only a few slides, but I'll, uh, I'll show you how we, how we went about that. So um, hopefully people can see this. Um, one sec. So we got together um, as, a, as a small group um, towards the end of the project and we basically did it old school. So we printed out all the images uh, from Instagram as a bulk. Um, and what we did, didn't did have attached to them was any names. So it meant that we could just look at the images on their own uh, and sift them through. Um, and we just worked through and looked at maybe images that would work together. 
um, but also just images that kind of stood out in terms of layout um, and really capturing the area. So we're trying to keep in touch with the overall theme of uh, the YAMCAMS book uh, project. And this is like a, just a, a, an overview of how we did it. And we did it really old school. So we had like a, A4 paper and print stick and we, we just glued things together, um, made rough notes. On the bottom there is a little giveaway of, of perhaps what the cover looks like. But, you know, we did a, we did a lot of decision making in one kind of big session. Um, and that really worked as a kind of a, a get together. Um, but it's very democratic. So, you know, we, did, we didn't like say, well, I really like this person. I, I, you know, I want all their images in. We just worked through it carefully. So it was a group decision. And um, I think we're happy with, with how the, the kind of uh, project came about towards the end. Um, so what we did after that was we, we just worked through a load of drafts um, and, you know, putting a book together is, is more complicated than, than that perhaps suggests. Uh, we had to kind of like um, balance the images up and we did a lot of sharing of, of the files. Um, we did it, basically did it on Word to begin with, just so we could have a quick look at it. And then again, having Magda involved uh, was fantastic because she, she could then uh, start to assemble it into something that actually looks like a book. Um, and then we did another load of editing uh, until we got to the, the final stages of it, really. Um, but again, you know, um, it, it was real teamwork. And obviously the design side of it, uh, again, is, is down to Magda's skill, really, of you know, being able to put things together uh, and work with us, even if it was just like scribble notes or photographs of drawings or, or whatever, she, she was able to to get, get at what we were trying to achieve, really. Um, so that's sort of how it went about um, in terms of like we, we got from Instagram to a book format. Um, I think we're got, gonna have Sarah Zacharek now start to uh, show everyone the book. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna yeah. flick to my other camera. So I'm gonna turn yeah. this camera off. Okay. I can so that you don't have to watch me go. Ugh. Um, <laughs> hopefully, like I'm assuming you can still hear me. Um, if yeah. I can you hear me still? Yeah. Brilliant. Excellent. But you can't see my confused face, so that's good. Uh, so I'm just gonna get my overhead camera set up. Um, just to add on to to what Tom was saying about the the design of the book. Um, I just want to point out how difficult it was to, to make those final decisions and that there are a lot of images that could have easily made the book if the book was going to be 10 times bigger. Um, so, so what it kind of came down to in the end was, well, this image works with this image, um, you know, opposite each other on a page. Um, so any images that didn't make it into the book, it's not because they're not good enough. It's just that, um, you know, we had to kind of choose a certain number of images. Um, so Bixby's going crazy on my phone at the moment. I don't even know what Bixby does. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he just always pops up when I don't need him. Okay, so I'm going to turn on my camera. Okay, so you should be able to see my, my lap now. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so I've got the book. The book is in this envelope. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, if at any point you need me to kind of like move around or anything, just let me know. Okay. Uh, so yeah, here we here we have the uh, first view of the book. Can I, can um, I see it on the full screen, or um, can I just check that? Is everyone seeing it on full screen, or that? Yeah. If you um, right click the video and press pin video, then it'll make it um, the full screen one for you. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. Um, so yeah, here is the, the front cover. Um, I think this was by J. Mason Burns, I think the, the front image cover. Um, so we kind of, that's one of the ones that we saw and thought actually this would be a really good image for the cover. Um, that's one of the first conversations that we had on the day that we looked through um, the order of the images. Ah, title page. I've got an image here from Thea Brown, um, taken in Tipton. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see in this camera, it's got Tipton written 
<laughs> on the bus stop there. Um, so just really great. Um, we've got some blurb from Tom here. And uh, we've got some fantastic writing from Kerry. And I think Kerry's going to read that to us um, afterwards. So I'm not going to give any spoilers there. Um, Tracy Hickenbottom's image. So this was taken in Dudley, um, which goes really nicely, I think, with the, the Yamcans logo um, that we were talking about earlier, designed by Magda. Um, you know, nice kind of combination of the colours there. Cool. We've got some people saying that they still can't see it on full screen. Oh, yeah. Um, is, is there a way we can pin it our end? Um, so the, um, the image has been spotlighted, um, so um, the attendees will be able to change um, their view, so they should be able to, um, to see it larger. So I'll just put a note into the chat so that everyone's aware. Okay. Okay, so hopefully people can click on view um, and make it larger. So got our first double spread here. So this is Alice Wade's image here. This is in Stourbridge and Leah Hoy's image here taken in Wolverhampton. Uh, I don't know if my lighting's a bit, bit naff there. Um, some of the images we're kind of going through and they're like so familiar to us now. Um, like these images from, from kind of looking at them through, through the Instagram page and then deciding on the book layout. Um, Becky Thompson, and um, this one was taken in Tipton. Um, and there, there's a couple of these kind of taken on the canal where we really liked the fact that it looks like um, skyscrapers, um, but it's not, it's trickery. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've got, so we've got our lovely yellow contrast page um, submitted by Bobby Petford in Wolverhampton and Rachel Shakespeare also in Wolverhampton. Um, and these may be a bit obvious why these ones were paired together. Um, the, the obviously the, the yellow um, of these images, but also the, the geometry um, of the images as well. And here's another of the um, skyscraper images that are talked about. This is from Caroline Bryce in West Brom. Um, and those are, I don't know if I can get close enough for you to see, those are just stacks of crates rather than skyscrapers there. And we've got two images here from David Fisher. Yeah, and I think David's one of the people who perhaps isn't on Instagram. I don't, I don't think he's got an Instagram account, but he's a great photographer. I think there's, uh, there's two or three images that um, you know didn't make it onto Instagram, which we could have put in the book as well. So um, yeah, and that was about lines, wasn't it, that one? We really liked the lines. Yeah. Yeah, so, so two kind of seemingly unrelated images. You can draw connections between them, um, you know, especially if you, you stare at them for long enough. And that's kind of what we did that night that we put it all together, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, this is one of the first images that we received, I think, from James Gennard, um, taken in Stourbridge. And I think this is one of the last images that we received from Kerry O'Coy in Wolverhampton. And hopefully a lot of these sites are really familiar to you as well. Uh, I think that's what kind of came through in the submissions was there's a lot of love for the black country. There's a lot of love for these sites um, and a lot of familiarity and um, a lot of comments on the images saying, oh yeah, I pass this place every day. Um, Emily Williams uh, taken in Wolverhampton. Um, so we had some comments about this one and how it looks like, um, was it Led Zeppelin album yeah. cover? Yeah. yeah. And then a lot of debate over where that Led Zeppelin photo was taken. Um, John Willis in Dudley, um, Cavendish House or Cave Dish How. Um, and one of Ronnie Ackling's images taken in Stourbridge. Um, Ronnie submitted quite a few images. We kind of fell in love with Ronnie's photography style um, during the course of this book. And then our fantastic, beautiful double page spread. I love opening to this, this middle page. It's just so bright and colorful. Um, and this was from Maria Casia in Stourbridge. 
this this one is my favorite image i think in the whole book from karam mirza um, taken in west brom and again it was one of the earlier photographs that we received um, i just absolutely fell in love with karam's um, photography style um, just the colors in this and the, the way it's been framed um, it's absolutely stunning um, so yeah a lot of love for his work. I think we liked how that could be, you know, anywhere in the world, really. It's Absolutely. Apart from the sign, really. I think if you look carefully at the sign, you can start to think, well, it's in England, but uh, it's an amazing photograph. And then we've got Luke, Luke Onofrio, um, taken in Langley. Um, so we did notice not many black and white images came through did they really it was, it was a lot of color um but this one kind of st stood out as a black and white image and perhaps wouldn't have worked so well in color um so yeah good work there luke thea brown in tipton so we've got the contrast on this page um you know very similar shapes and lines one in color one obviously in black and white and that sky, beautiful black country sky. And we've got Kate Hayes taken in Warsaw. And Kerry Hadley Price taken in Stourbridge. And then we've got Kelly Hadley in Oldbury. I showed this image to my partner the other day and it was like, is that the sky? Like, how is it so white? <laughs> um, so it just seamlessly merges into the page, this image. Um, absolutely fantastic. Ollie Wood, taken in Wolverhampton. And again, just like brilliant framing there. And another from Kelly Hadley um, in Oldbury. And again, just, just the way both of those images are composed um, and the colours just absolutely fantastic, really, uh, really caught our attention. We've got Priya Sharma taken in Wolverhampton. And we've got Tammy Jevons in Bilston. This might be a familiar site uh, for some people. Well, that did have us chatting, didn't it? Going, where's this? Yeah. <laughs> Where was this taken? What building is this? Then that's part and, of it, isn't it? You know, it's it's not it's totally unexpected the kind of stuff that was sent through and yeah, and areas that people haven't even heard of as well or or never been to at least. You know, where's that? And we had to like, say, well, that's for your region, so you need to go and have a look yeah. at this for us, please. And some of them are like really familiar, but you just can't quite work out where they were taken. That's it. Um, but you kept us all on our toes, gave us a good challenge, so that was good. And we've got Graham Everett's image here, taken in Wolverhampton. And yeah, we just liked the way these two images worked alongside each other as well. Toil, taken in Wolverhampton. So you might be familiar with their artwork in and around Wolverhampton. This one in the bottom here was taken by Tracy Hickenbottom in Stourbridge. I really liked this image. It reminded me of um, an image that you might take on um, like a toy film camera, like a Holger um, or a Diana, um, just kind of retro feel um, to that image which we felt worked really nicely uh, with Jan Hart's image here in Wolverhampton. Um, Tom had a good little giggle about all of the uh, beer cans. <laughs> yeah, they really worked their way through the beers there to, to get that. <laughs> it's also all the those different ones as well, different, different makes of beer. And the background as well. Look, they look like little cans in the background as well, in a way. So yeah, <laughs> they really thought about Brilliant. it. Um, and another of our favourites here, submitted by Zoe Mason um, in Penn. <laughs> I mean, we want to join this party. 
Um, so, so let us know next time that, that you're having a, a teddy bears picnic um, with the Elvis, a horse, and some kind of cat animal. <laughs> <laughs> Which is brilliant. And again, it kind of speaks of the, the humour of the black country as well. Um, you know, that, that kind of came through in a lot of these images. And we've got Ronnie Ackling here taken in lie. Um, and obviously we had to pair these two images together. <laughs> um, we've got a double page here from Stephanie Benita Kumari. Um, and again, these images just blew us away. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, they, they could have been taken in America in the 1960s. Yeah. <laughs> they were taken in Wolverhampton. Absolutely you know, love that, that page. A couple of pages left. So we've got this image here from Sam Hill. Um, taken in Dudley, um, and again that that beautiful black country sky. Um, maybe maybe that's a thing. I don't know. Maybe we need to do some research. We've got the bluest skies, <laughs> black country perhaps. Um, and then Bethany Williams, um, image taken in Brown Hills. Um, we've got another image here from J. Mason Burns. Um, absolutely fantastic. Um, my, my absolute silly. favorite love it <laughs> yeah it's brilliant i mean what do you guys like about this image in particular i i love the composition um i love the the signage that's captured in the window almost grabs your attention to start off with and then you're drawn into the almost like that depth of field by then like looking at the the people that are sitting there and then it's almost that question around like all oh, what are they doing? What have they been talking about? And it's just got that real, like it feels really real. I think it's a really real representation. It's really, I think somebody's just put up timeless black country in the comments. And to me, that's exactly what that feels like. Yeah, I mean, that that chip shop in Cradley Heath has been going since the 50s, I think. I think, And that photo could have been at any period since the 50s, I think. Mm -hmm. um, probably got the same plates. <laughs> and I, I like the look you're getting from that, the, the woman on the right. I think she's, I don't know if she's annoyed, probably more interested than annoyed, I don't know, but amazing photograph. Absolutely brilliant, really great. And um, we thought that worked really nicely next to this image from Kate Pritchard in Stourbridge, um, yeah. the laundrettes. I think about Kate's as well, I, I think um, what's great about it, it's it, all the lights coming just from the inside. So there's nothing, there's no street lights or anything like that interfering with it. And we liked it uh, maybe as a full stop to the whole book. Yeah. Um, uh, so it, it's it, like all the others were really bright blue sky, uh, lots of colour and daylight. And then this is sort of end of the night. Yeah. Last like, on. Sort of like Edward Hopper, but with no people as well, which you yeah. Know, yeah, I think that's quite interesting. And also the, um, the washing machines at the back look like a little face. <laughs> That's what's great about photos, isn't it? People see lots of you know different things <laughs> from it. Yeah. There's an image on the back as well, isn't there, Sarah? Um, yeah. So image on the back from John Gilbert, um, taken in Walsall. And again, this this could have been taken in any city in the world, really, couldn't it? This this image. Um, yet there is something still distinctly black country about it. Um, so yeah, excellent work. And then we've got our logo that, again. A few people have said about that one that it's a, a bit like the Streets album, you know, the, the front cover of the Streets. Ah, uh, yeah. But that, that's taken at night. But I think what was interesting as well, because we got to see it close up, you could actually see people in the flats. Um, but obviously that doesn't come across in the book because you can't see that, that much detail on a, on a printed page. Um, you know the uh, where it's got the Yam Cams logo, um, just on just a few pages in. Um, we kind of included that, like the the Yam Cams logo, kind of announces that we're about to go into the the gallery. Um, 
but I really like the the one on the left, which is um, Dudley Zoo. But it's just a really not, nice detail, and I think it kind of leads us into the the, the whole gallery as, as a whole in a nice way. I think that was a I do like that kind of thing. But some of this stuff you don't really see properly until it's printed as a draft. Um, we weren't sure whether all of it would work in that that order, um, and we did change some uh, some around as well, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, but but overall, I think we. Uh, we did a decent job. Um, we didn't have to do much editing after the, the initial first couple of drafts, really. Um, Has anybody got any pages they want me to go back to or any images they want me to say? Um, someone in the chat's asked if we can have a look at the cover again. Yeah. So they're flats in Hales area. Um, and that's Jay Mason Burns, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, again, he's quite prolific. If you look at his Instagram account, he, he's uh, quite prolific in the Black Country and, and Birmingham. But um, there's something about the, the colours on this um, and also maybe the fact that it's landscape and we were looking at a landscape book. Um, it just popped out straight away as a cover. Um, and as you can see, on, on when I showed our, our kind of brainstorming session, we pretty much decided that as a cover on the first... Um, first time we got together so it, it basically um became the instant cover really that photo decided the layout of the book yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah that's it. um i mean the 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 actual format um is photo book size really but uh, we went for um landscape rather than portrait um and we've gone for the paper that um a lot of photo books kind of use it's more of a matte feel um which i think does the images a lot of justice really uh, if, if you get, go too shiny with photo books you, you know you, you're dealing with light on the on the images so uh yeah i think i think it's looking good um okay so uh what i thought as well as sort of obviously us in the book talking about the project and presenting the images um we did think it'd be nice to have some extra content in it um, about the area because really what we'd, we'd like this to do is is be a, a book that you might pick up in 10 years time and um, reflect upon lockdown maybe but also uh, start to consider the area in a bit more detail and as part of that um, that's why I asked uh, Kerry Hadley Price if she'd write something for the book uh, which she agreed to do uh, so we're, we're over the moon with that. So in the centre of the book is a double, um, not, not the centre, sorry. Um, towards the centre is a, a spread of uh, two pages with, with Kerry's uh, writing in. Um, the brief was quite uh, minimal, really. It was just, you know, we like what you do. We like how you write about the black country. Could you have a look at the draft of the, the book and the project and, and see, write whatever you want. Um, and that's what Kerry did. So uh, she's going to join us now to, to read, read the piece from the book. Well, thank you, uh, Tom, and thank you, everybody. I mean, it, it, it's a real pleasure to have written and been asked to write anything here to, in this book, because I think it's an amazing project. Um, and I think it says a lot, just the, the existence of it says a lot about the people from the Black Country. Um, but anyway, I'll read what I, <clears throat> what I wrote. And it's this, it's an immense, immeasurable place. I'm talking about the black country here and it sits like some kind of brooding consciousness somewhere at the borders of the city of Birmingham and the Worcestershire edges and the Shropshire limits. You can argue if you want to about where it is exactly this black country of ours, but my advice is not to waste too much time on that because for those of us who live here, there is no argument. Now, if you think about it, one of the things the COVID-19 pandemic has done is made us rethink the outside, maybe value it a bit more or think about it in a different way. It's made us yearn to be out and about. It's made us realise how precious things are. Our health, yes, family and friends, of course, but also our surroundings, where we live. It's made us buy dogs 
So we've got an excuse to go for a walk. And when I say walk, I mean a different kind of walking, more alert, more aware, a kind of traipsing about, sensing what there is to be sensed about the geography, geology, and the architecture of where we're from, which is why this project is so incredibly important. See, the Yam Camps project is a siren call for us black country folk and for the place we live in. Because what this project says quite rightly is that photographically speaking, the black country is on heat. And this is not just a record of our time here. It's a representation of what we see as being this time in, our, in this place of ours. These photographs sing their own songs, one of humanity, yes, but also of delight. The angles, the colors, the barefaced thrill of them is palpable. These image makers here have captured what some academics refer to as the liminality of our region through juxtapositions of concrete and color, wild scapes and writing on walls. When you look at them, you wonder why you hesitate. What is it about them, these images? Well, here's the answer. It's the vague sensation of wrongness or the sense of something strangely familiar or familiarly strange. It is what Mark Fisher refers to as something so strange as to make us think it shouldn't exist or shouldn't exist there. What you feel when you look at these images is the tremor of the eerie, the sensation of the weird. Yes, but this is good. This is part of the way you're also transported to the very edgelands of the edgelands where you experience the cultural currency of our region. But what these photographs convey most importantly is each image maker's intuitive, joyful presencing of place. And you feel that too, their black country clairsentience, their ability to feel our region's energy and the clear sense of future, present and past physical, emotional states of others through the lens of photography. You'll feel the magnetic force of our region. In other words, what you'll feel is black countryness. Thank you for letting me write that. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Kerry. Pleasure. Amazing. So obviously, whoever's got the book, um, or we'll, we'll be getting the book or get the chance to read that again because it is worth reading and reading again because it's uh, quite a dense piece of writing in terms of you know what's contained in it and it's not it's not it's not just about the book it's about the, the region as a whole um, and I, again I think you've got it spot on um, as always um, I was just going to say a few things about getting hold of the book so um, I'm just going to share my screen just to give a little bit of information. Um, and hopefully this will work. Um, so I've got my presentation here. So hopefully everyone can see this. Um, in terms of getting hold of the book itself, um, I'm going to be um, at a place in Wolverhampton called the uh, Makers Dozen Gallery on Saturday. Um, between 11 and four. So it's basically next, next to the art gallery in Wolverhampton, there's um, a series of, of studios called Maker's Dozen and it's got its own gallery. Um, so I'm gonna be there basically surrounded by boxes of books um, and be handing them out to people who want to come along between those times. Um, I'll post this information on the YamCams account as well. Uh, so people know. Um, but basically I'll be there all most of Saturday. Uh, people can come and collect their books. What we've decided to do is give people a couple each. Um, so, you know, obviously whoever's uh, had something in the book, um, you know, I think you probably want to give maybe one to your family members or just keep two copies. Um, so we're going to give everybody two copies each. Um, the other thing that's happening is all the uh, libraries in the region of agreed to stock it. Um, so Dudley, Wolverhampton, Warsaw um, and Samwell have agreed to stock the book. Um, also, it's going into archives. So uh, all the archives in the region 
uh, are going to have a copy or two each. So future researchers will be able to have a look at this and see what they make of it um, and look at it as a project. But also, you know, who knows, some of, the, some of the people in it may pick up photography and go on to big things and it will be a record of their first foray into photography. Um, but obviously, you know, it, it's also about perhaps a reflection on the times because um, obviously it's been a difficult period in terms of being able to move about and get out and about. Um, so that's a chance for people to sort of see it in fu future generations, I suppose. Um, so um, what I'm going to do now is just go back to uh, our general chat. One sec. And I think we we might have a chance for a, a Q and A, um, and see what see if anyone's got anything to ask us generally. I don't know if Claire's around. If, if there's any more questions. Yeah. Um, yep, we have a question from John. Um, this one's to sort of each of you who've sort of been responsible for looking after each area. Um, did any of the images submitted uh, surprise you in, in the fact that you know you sort of come across some hidden gems in those areas? Has anyone else got one they want to chip in on? About? I think there's quite a lot, but yeah, I'm just trying to refresh. And uh, they're, they're just all so familiar to me now that I'm like, it's yeah. like I've known these images forever. Um, so I'm just having a, a flick back through. I think what was quite interesting was where some of the boundaries of the regions crossed as well. So especially kind of, uh, so I looked after Warsaw, uh, but I live kind of literally on the border of Warsaw and Sandwell and Great Bar. Um, and I think some of the photos that were submitted, sometimes it was quite difficult to work out like, oh, which bit of the boundary are they on? So I think there's, there's quite a hot spot at the moment, um, just under kind of like a uh, Tainbridge railway station that seems to be a bit of a, a favourite area for people to wander down and down that, that bit of the, the River Tame. And I think it's, it, it's interesting trying to work out where that lies within the boundaries. That was the interesting one for me. It was fun to see people debate it like on Instagram and Facebook going, no, that's not Tipton, it's <laughs> in this place. <laughs> I really liked, um, I mean, there's loads that I like, but I like Ronnie Acklin's picture of the horse. I think it's really, uh, it's one of those things that if you describe the area, uh, it's quite surprising to people. Because I think if you go through the black country on the train or it, in a car, you don't realise how rural parts of it are. And you'll get this thing where you'll, you'll have, um, you know, horses in a field next to factories. And he nailed that with that picture. It kind of shows the landscape really, really kind of uh, um, exactly. I think it's quite surprising. You see cows sometimes in the middle of like industrial estates as well. It's just a strange, strange place. Really. I think that's partly what Kerry was getting at in her, in her writing. Um, and then I think the other thing that really surprised me was the one on the same page, which was just, we didn't expect people to send in pictures of an event. So I, I think it was more to do with, um, you know, pe what people had seen out and about, but the the tea party on Penn Island, you know, it, it's almost like they set up their own event just for, for us really. And I think <laughs> as Sarah said, it's annoying, well, not annoying, but it would have been nice to go along. So next time they, they do that, we'll, we'll be there, I think. There's a great one as well with, I think it was a fox driving a, a sit on mower. <laughs> but uh, it was slightly kind of uh, blurred, so we didn't put that in. But again, that's not something you see every day. Um, yeah. yeah, that probably was the, the most surprising one to open. And I think the, um, the email header was something like, um, Tay party on Penn <laughs> Island. Yeah. We are like, ooh, what's this gonna be? <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah. So maybe future uh, anthropologists will look at that and say, well, that's what they used to do in the black country. That's just normal. <laughs> yeah. We got a video as well, didn't we? Of um, Which was quite a surprise because we didn't expect to get a video. Uh, we thought it would just be photographs of a little wind up toy of um, teeth. So it's pattering along. But we thought it was quite sweet. So we put that on the Instagram page and uh, it was quite well received. Yeah. <laughs> Like that was probably one that stood out to me. 
I think some of the like all of the images have almost a, a humor to them as well and a real like black country sentiment around that humor um and some of it's really over and then some of it's a little bit more like you have to look a little bit deeper for, for that bit that, that makes you stop and think to Kerry's point like being a little bit odd or a little bit weird um and I think that was really exciting like fishing through the photos to be like oh that's the one that's caught my attention it was really playful weren't they yeah yeah it's yeah, a really good word playful yeah and I think we we've talked before about you know we haven't got beaches and and kind of um you know kind of traditionally famous beauty spots really um so it's amazing that people have seen the landscape in this way and I think um it's kind of, kind of a unique project in that way. I don't think I've seen many that are looking at this kind of urban photography in the same way. Um, so I think there is scope to, to do something further with it. Um, there are there are some discussions about that, so we'll, we'll see what happens as we as we move forward. But um, obviously, this focused on the Black Country as a whole, but there might be options to look at maybe smaller projects or uh, maybe with a different slant. Um, I think the other thing that we would have done, I think, if it wasn't around lockdown, we would maybe have had an exhibition. Um, so we would have fun, um, probably funded an exhibition rather than uh, have a book. But in a way, I think the book's a nice output and more of a permanent output than having a, an exhibition. So, um, but that's not to say we can't use the images in future and do something with it. Um, so we'll see what happens. It was really about as well, sorry, can I just add on from what Tom was saying? Um, it was about really adding on the point that you don't have to go far to take a photograph or an interesting photograph, you know, just step outside your door and in your area, even though you walk through it day in, day out, and it becomes really like mundane, um, that can be really interesting. So it was just about getting people to just just take in their surroundings and just document what you see. Um, if, if anybody can't um, make it on Saturday to collect the book, is there any other way that they can they can get one? Yeah, um, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to cycle around to everybody's house now. What we're going to do is um, we're going to post them out to people eventually. So first of all, Saturday will be an opportunity for people to come up and collect them and have a chat if they want. Um, and then beyond that, we'll look at posting them out. So um, we'll be messaging people for addresses and, and things like that uh, if they can't make it. Uh, we understand that, you know, uh, short notice maybe uh, to come on Saturday, but um, it's just a good way to, to maybe meet some of the people who are in are involved in person because we're allowed to sort of do that a bit more now, aren't we? So um, they're beyond that, but we'll we'll get them posted out. Um, and I did budget for that, so it's not like I've got to start go and rob a load of stamps. Or <laughs> it, it's part of it. You know that all the postmen, don't you? Apparently, they uh, our copies arrived in like crazy time. Yeah, like, like an hour. <laughs> well, like yeah, twelve well, hours. Yeah. I exchanged some stolen power tools <laughs> and they just hand delivered them. Um, James asks, could you offer signed copies of the book on Saturday for donations to charity? Perhaps. Yeah, um, who, who would that, who would he like to sign it? I, think. <laughs> <laughs> I could go around the streets and see if there's any celebrities around, but yeah, we could do that, I think. Um, or maybe a, a signature on behalf of the team or yeah. I mean, we, we did discuss um, having um, having them for sale and giving the money to charity, um, but the mechanism for that wasn't in place with, um, with Creative Black Country. Um, I mean, but what we thought we'd do is have as many available as possible just for people who are in the book, and obviously people who are involved in Yam Cams generally um, would like a copy, and then the next best thing is to put it into libraries so people can read it as and when. Okay. Uh, I think there'll be, if there's any left, we'll be um, 
we could look at um, giving some away free as well in, in places like um, maybe the art galleries in the region and stuff like that. But we'll see how we get on with the first batches. Okay, Fab. Um, are there any more questions for the panel today before we go? I think we're okay for a couple of minutes. We are a little bit over, but that's okay, I think. Um, one, for, uh, one from Luke, yeah. Will the book be able, uh, be able to purchase at a later date? Um, I have family who would like to get a copy, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, hopefully what we'll do is make sure everyone gets their two copies. Um, I'll keep some spares. So if, I've had a few people say that they'd like to post them abroad. Um, so obviously people have got friends and family in different countries. And I think this, this project actually, an, the output of the book is a nice reminder of the black country to people who, who live away. So I'll try and keep some in reserve. And uh, there is always the option to do a, a further run as well. So we could, we, could, we could look at that. But obviously these are the prize first editions. <laughs> Okay, great. Um, if, do you want to add anything else before we go, Tom, or, or any, any of you? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing some of the comments because I think we've got quite a few little stories in there. Yeah, um, so, yeah I'll get a copy of that to you all. Yeah, I think um, the other thing is the Yamcam's Instagram, it, it won't just um, shut down. I think we'll keep that going for a while just um, to see what people make of the book. I think one thing I'd like to do is get people to send in their um like their reactions to the book and maybe photographs of the book in place so we can share that it's actually get going out and about and maybe see who sends it out the furthest um i do know one of, one of my friends is interested in sending one to australia he's got family out there um but i mean some of the talks that we've done uh, previously it's amazing who's looking you get people from you know all over the world uh, there's a long, like a strong affection for the, the region. So um, hopefully we'll have some in reserve for people who, who want to send extras out. And it'll be a case of just getting in touch. Yeah, and do tell us where you're sending them off to so we can share it with people who are in the book as well. And they can know oh, my, my image is being viewed in Australia or, you know, wherever. Yeah. Uh, so well, do could, let us know. We could maybe develop a hashtag to, to drop into it obviously the yam cams but we could think of something else as well but i'm sure we can cobble something together yam, yam on tour. <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> yeah yam cams on tour that sounds decent yeah i think we'll probably go with that one um but yeah but thanks for everyone for uh obviously attending um thanks to claire for hosting the event as usual with uh uh with arts fest arts fest is, is a great um thing to follow generally so if you go on to uh instagram i mean most of you've seen it already I'd, I'd imagine but uh the walls art fest program is always free generally um and it has some really interesting speakers uh and activities and it's always rolling so definitely check out arts fest um I, i'd like to thank creative black country obviously because they funded it um through their creative connections program and again, if people who are here now and uh, are looking at creative ideas in the region, then Creative Black Country are a great source of support. Um, they're open just to have a chat about an idea. Um, they might not be able to you know, fund it directly or, or whatever, but they're always good for um, talking you through ideas. And they've got loads of stuff going on at the moment. So I would say maybe look at the Creative Black Country website as well. Um, they're doing a lot of stuff over in Dudley, for example, at the moment. So, um, so it's definitely worth checking them out. Uh, and obviously, thanks for, to everyone on the team for for coming along and getting involved, and to Kerry for for the great reading you've you've done. And thank you to all the submissions. Yeah, yeah, some somebody... everyone that got involved. Yeah, we yeah. Done it without you. Yeah. <laughs> it's been really surprising as well. I think we we're really surprised how quickly it started rolling um because you know i think anyone who's got an instagram account and um use it on a regular basis know that it takes a long time to develop but it, it seemed to kind of just mm. burst into life so yeah really chuffed with it right well um thanks tom and thanks to the amcom's team it's so nice to see you all i hope it's in person mm. really soon
mm -hmm. um, what a fabulous project to be part of and it's just it has it's blown me away just just seeing all the images that you've all taken it's just fab um so keep it up um as tom says do come and pick up your copy of the book this week at makers dozen studios our next starts first online event is this thursday on the 22nd of july at 7 p.m and is the next talk in our festival of britain season uh, Black Country Living Museum researchers Dr. Jane Gilbert and Simon Briarcliffe will be talking about the festival in the Black Country and you can book for free through Eventbrite as usual. So we hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.